Hello, this is Mark McRoy. I'm here at the Electric Cave Recording Studio doing a video for um, Microphone Boutique. And today we're going to talk about ribbon microphones. What is a ribbon microphone? And the most famous characteristic of them is they can uh, be damaged by phantom power. So uh, let's start by talking about uh, this is a nice old RCA. Uh, the shock mount's a little wobbly, but it's. Uh, mics from the 50s and in the 1950s the ribbon microphones were all over studios in the United States uh, the US didn't have very many um, condenser microphone manufacturers uh, that was kind of a European thing led by Neumann of course uh, so in the American studios in the classic 50s videos you'll see ribbon microphones everywhere or you'll find um, a combination of other dynamic first of all ribbon microphones are a dynamic microphone uh, not quite like the moving coil microphone like the Shure you know the Shure SM58 and 57 that we all know and, and uh, I wouldn't say love but we all know and tolerate um, those are a dynamic microphone with a moving coil um, this is a dynamic microphone but rather than a coil moving in a magnet a ribbon a long slim ribbon is strung in a magnetic field and as the ribbon moves it creates um, magnetic impulses um, they were largely replaced in uh, studios by uh, um, condenser microphones because condenser microphones just have a, a wider range and they also have um, usually have a preamp built in whereas the ribbon microphones don't um, so they were just louder getting to the board therefore the, the closer to your source that the preamp is uh, the more you're going to preserve that um, sound as it runs along wires and such so uh, condenser microphones in the 60s took over especially with the, the, the British sound being so huge in America and also in classical music the German uh, productions which use exclusively German made usually condenser microphones but let's get back to the ribbon the ribbons are still used today in studios and they still come in handy for a voice they really sound different and they if they're they sound beautiful usually if there's nothing wrong with them um, it's a very simple uh, um, thing uh, I usually end up EQing them um, I usually find them to be a little uh, muddy in the, in the lows and so sometimes I take those lows out and clean out the lows and uh, but what it does is it gives you a very present sound and a very um, and a volume that's uh, not abrasive. So if uh, a lot of people like them on drum overheads, because you can turn them up and it doesn't get shrill, uh, it just has a nice thick presence. Um, that's the characteristic of the ribbon microphone. It's great and used in combinations with other microphones. Um, if you're using just a plain old SM57 on a guitar amp and you put a ribbon microphone in with it, um, you can get two totally different colors that you can later blend. However, the design flaw in the ribbon microphone is that it's a ribbon. And uh, a ribbon in a ribbon microphone can be damaged by, by um, sound pressure levels if you're air hitting it from a speaker cabinet. Um, over time, it will just, so the ribbon itself is corrugated and over time, from getting just blown, usually in one direction, they, they usually, they're uh, figure eight microphones, all of them, because unless they have the back side is actually sealed up, because the ribbon doesn't care which side you're on. But a lot of them look like they have an address side, and so that becomes the side that gets banged on by air and until it kind of, kind of bows out a little and then kind of starts to droop. And then when the ribbon has the opportunity to droop, it will get stuck on the magnet or something. Um, when you find old ribbon mics, they commonly need retentioning. Um, but uh, I usually put some of my uh, more economical Asian made microphones in front of those guitar cabinets. So if something does happen to them, it, it was, it's not that bad a deal. But you gotta be careful. Um, they sound great on saxophones, but saxophones also wind, it's not strong wind. But, um, um, so you gotta be careful of the wind, you gotta be careful of the, the fact that the ribbon itself is delicate. But also, the big thing, uh, people always talk about how phantom power can destroy a ribbon microphone. 
And if you have phantom power on your board, don't use room microphones or you have to have the phantom power turned off. This is what I was told when I was learning, and maybe it's a good thing I was told, but after plugging in my ribbon microphone to a phantom power channel several times and it not catching fire, I was uh, surprised to see that, and I decided to investigate and, and find out more for myself. Um, the situation is that uh, the transformer, so all ribbon microphones have a transformer. The, the ribbon produces a very low signal. This is part of why, why I said the condenser mic became so popular in studios. The ribbon produces a very low signal, and in order to, uh, to get that to something you can use, um, they use uh, usually a, a, a transformer inside that is minimum 20 to 1 ratio, probably closer to 30 or 40 to 1 ratio. Um, uh, a transformer that really brings the signal up. Uh, because uh, it might be, the impedance might be like a couple of ohms or something, and you need an impedance of 500 at least. No, not well, you can do it with 200. Two on a red microphone, 200 is a good uh, uh, somewhere between 250 and, and uh, just a, I just messed up a bunch of numbers. Somewhere between 50 and 200 is. Um, an acceptable place to land and so they all have transformers and so those those transformers will block DC voltage from passing into the what we call the ribbon motor the, where the actual ribbon is located um, because transformers don't uh, like to pass DC voltage um, uh, by design uh, they're, they're not uh, uh, they're not able to so that especially since it's uh, such a low, um, low um, powered, it's 48 volts at you know, a few milliamps or something. I don't remember exactly. Um, now I'm talking at my rear, but I'd say 50 or something. It's a very most phantom power um, signals have a very low amperage. Um, so it's it, it, um, when you plug it into a dynamic mic, uh, same thing. Your your dynamic mics will have um, will have transformers in them, your shores and such, and, and that will block the DC from doing anything. Um, so um, yes, phantom power can hurt because even if you have a transformer in your microphone, what they all do. Uh, if you use a patch bay, if you have a reverse phase cable somewhere, if you're half a click out, it has to be a couple of things that will build up to create this um, preponderance of, of facts that will cause your ribbon to just disappear because once uh, that DC voltage somehow gets to it, um, it's, it's not pretty. So, um, what else did I want to tell you about ribbons? Um, so, like, like I said, they need preamping. Uh, you get a preamp uh, to them pretty soon, and it works out great. I like these um, little uh, 20 dB FET preamps. I use them in my studio, and they really, uh, really just give you enough a little boost on... Uh, not only this, but the Shure SM7 is a very deaf mic as well. And it, if you add that preamp on that side, and of course that preamp will block, will runs off of phantom power, and will block the phantom power from getting to the ribbon microphone. So, if you're using a cloud lifter, or I use a Tryon Audio, I think it's called, um, these, these little uh, preamps, um, those run off of 48 volts, and then they block the 48 volts too. So if you're worried... If you have a board where you can't turn off your phantom power or you need, you can only turn it on all the channels at once and you need it. Um, that's one good way to get around that little uh, quirk. So, um, ribbons do loosen themselves and get loose over time. Um, if your ribbon is not properly tensioned, uh, your equalization curve will be way off. Um, so, if your ribbon isn't sounding as good as it used to, uh, it probably needs to be... Um, retensioned or re-ribboned and it's not rocket science but uh, a good uh, 
microphone company uh, can, uh, repair company can uh, reproduce your ribbon. Um, it, uh, some people do it at home with tin foil, which is not quite. You need something a little more. Uh, the the uh, foil that we use is medical grade. Uh, I think we get it from Japan, oddly enough. It's not American or Russian. Um, but we get a, a medical grade uh, foil, which has a certain purity to it and lack of pinholes and whatever else. Um, and it's more expensive than tin foil, of course, but um, and you can get it in gauges and more dependable. And so, um, ribbon mics can be repaired. There's nothing in there. It's kind of like the the uh, Ford Model A of microphones. There's, you just kind of open it up, and oh, that's that. There's that. There's that. And you can understand what's there. And um, usually, the transformers don't uh, don't pass away. Usually, if your ribbon is malfunctioned. It is because uh, the ribbon itself has a problem. All right, that's enough ribbon talk for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, check out microphoneboutique.com and um, here on on the internet, on YouTube, on Facebook. More helpful hints. Have a good day.